Hello and welcome back to Scale Down Customs. This is going to be part two of the Foos Designs 67 Dodge Coronet. So when we last left off, I had put my first coat of primer on, uh, sanded that down, got everything nice and smooth. So I'm ready for my second coat of primer. And before I do that, I need to get a couple other parts ready. Uh, I need to get the engine block uh, put together and, and some of the other pieces installed on that so I can get that smoothed off. Any seam lines filled in, things like that. And then on the um, and then on the hood hinges, I just realized I've got a couple of uh, ejection pin marks I need to fill in, so I'll be working on that. And then I've got some sink marks on the rear axle uh, that I wanna fill in. I'm not sure if those will be visible, but uh, just to be safe, I'm gonna fill those in and sand them smooth as well. So I got a little bit more prep work to do before I can get some stuff into primer. Let's get some of these pieces together and, and ready for primer. So for my glue, when I'm doing plastic styrene to styrene without any primer or paint in the way to interfere with the glue, I'll use the extra thin cement. Um, it just provides a really good bond between uh, the plastics. Alright, so for my body filler, I'm just going to be using this perfect plastic putty that I got from Deluxe Materials. I've been liking this a lot. It's, it's similar to like a Tamiya putty or something like that. I'll use this to kind of fill in any kind of like uneven seams on my engine block as well. So we'll be using this a little bit. And then for applying the material, I'm going to be using just some silicone brushes. Got this idea from Model Car Experiment and uh, I've been really happy with the way this goes on. All right, and let these pieces dry up, sand them down, and then uh, we'll be ready for some primer on those. All right, so I got those parts sanded down uh, in some primer, and this one had a little, needed a little bit more work. So I sanded that down a little bit more. Um, that's gonna need to be reprimered again. And I was thinking that, I think for the body, since this is a chip foo, so I'm just thinking that the callouts are probably gonna be smoothed off. Now, I don't know that, I mean, I. But I think I am. I'm going to take out the engine callout and the, uh, the RT callouts. I'm going to smooth those off. I'm going to leave the Chrysler symbol, but I am going to smooth those, those two off. So for that, I'm just going to be using my sanding sticks and then maybe uh, a sanding disc as well. So we'll just sand them down. All right, yeah, sometimes I can get a little bit more precise with my sanding discs on my machine, so sometimes I'll use that. But yeah, that looks a little bit, just a little bit cleaner of a look, just to make it look a little more custom. But uh, anyway, uh, back to the spray booth for these parts, get some primer on there, and then um, I think we'll be ready to actually start putting some color on stuff. All right, so I got the engine block, transmission, and the car back in another coat of primer. Yeah, not sure if you guys can see that, if that's going to come through on the camera, but yeah, right there, I can see that I need a little bit more work, kind of in some of these areas where I've sanded down those emblems. So I just need to pay a little bit more attention to some of those 
um, just to smooth them off a little more before I paint it. So that's what we're gonna do now. And I'm gonna do a little wet sanding just to make sure I'm getting a good sand on those. All right, so while I was sanding it down and I was gonna have to put another coat of primer on it anyway, I just went ahead and went over the body again just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. The panel lines are nice and even um, on everything, including the hood. So now we're ready for some primer on that and then we'll uh, keep moving forward. All right, got her back into primer um, and then sanded down with a 600 grit sanding sponge from Tamiya just to get everything nice and smooth. And so I think we're ready for some paint. So for the paint, I've actually chosen Scale Finishes Ferrari, uh, the Silverstone. It's kind of a dark green metallic. So we'll give this a shot, see how it sprays out. Now with Scale Finishes, I find that it, it dries really fast for me when I spray it on. So I like to use a little bit of, uh, of the Super Reducer just to, just to thin that out a little bit more. It's already airbrush ready, but I find if I add a little reducer to it, it gives me a little more drying time so it, doesn't, uh, so it won't uh, texture up on me as much. So. Anyway, so let's go, uh, let's go spray some paint.
All right, so we got the uh, body painted up with the scale finishes color. A couple of little dust spots in the hood and stuff, but uh, overall not looking too bad. And with the metallics, you can't really sand those down. I tried to sand them down just a hair because I'm going to try... I'm going to try a little bit of a custom paint scheme here. I'm just going to add some highlights to some of these body panels. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to get some of this stuff taped up and then get, get it back into the airbrush. And I'm going to take the paint, but I'm going to add some black to it and then add some, uh, some highlighting around the, around the race panels and stuff. So let's, uh, let's get her masked up. All right, so I got the first section taped off, um, and then I'm going to tape off some of the border pieces too to kind of highlight that as well. So let's go spray this first, and then we'll uh, keep going with masking and painting. So for my masking tape, I'm just using the Tamiya, the 6 mil and the 18 mil, and then just some Tamiya vinyl tape as well. And this is the 2 mil. All right, so that's kind of the look I was going for. This, I think, and on the hood, I think I sprayed it a little bit too far into the body instead of just making it just a little bit of a shadow highlight. But I don't know, we'll see how that looks once it's cleared. That might look better, but I think I sprayed that a little too wide. And I got some overspray that I might have to clean up. Guess I should have taped that a little bit more. All right, again, that's that's the look I was going for on that one. Uh, but again, I've got some overspray. I'll need to touch up on that. So I'm gonna get the rest of these uh, taped off and then spray those. Hopefully I'll do those a little bit better and then um, we'll be ready for some clear coat.
All right, so I'm just gonna spray that around there and hopefully I'll just get just a shadow around these raised edges. That's kind of what I'm going for. So we'll, uh, we'll go try that. So there we go. Maybe a little more black than I wanted once again. Yeah, I still went too heavy on my shadowing. And then I tried to do, and then I did a little bit of a fade down at the bottom. Well, we'll see how that looks once we get it into some clear. Anyway, kind of, kind of the look I was going for, but maybe a little too much black. All right, so I'm gonna get this thing cleaned off and ready for some clear coat. All right, so before clear coat, we just need to add a couple things, just a couple decals, and then I'm gonna paint the raised lettering on the hood here, and uh, then we should be ready for some clear. So to kind of keep with the black chrome theme, I'm gonna paint these letters uh, with just some Tamiya gunmetal. I think I might try using a toothpick, like maybe just the flat edges of a toothpick, because before, I've used the flat edges of the brush, and that works really good. Um, but I think I might try this and see how that goes. works pretty good. Hmm, interesting. All right, and then for this decal, since I do have some shadowing and some fading, I think it would just kind of make the shadowing and fading effects look a little bit weird. So I'm not gonna put this rear decal on. I think I'm just gonna keep it, again, kind of that clean custom look. So we'll let that paint and the little decals dry up and then we'll be ready for some clear. All right, so off camera, I just did some freehand airbrushing. I just put the regular color back in the airbrush and then just kind of sprayed over the black a little bit more just to kind of soften up those shadows a little bit more, not have so much black, um, and then fixed up some of my overspray areas that I needed to address. Anyway, so I just did some freehand airbrushing to clean up some of those areas, and now that the decal is dry and the paint is dry, I think we're ready for some clear coat. So for my clear, I'm just gonna be using the Gravity Colors 2K Clear and I'll usually do three coats, one kind of a, a lighter tack coat, let that sit for five minutes, and then a heavier coat, five minutes, and then another third and final heavier coat. And then I'll let, after the third coat, I'll let that dry for a good two or three days before we move on to anything else. So let's go, uh, let's go spray some clear finally.
All right, so got it into clear. Of course, I always get a couple of dust spots in there, so we'll have to do some sanding and polishing, but um, actually looks really good. So we're gonna let that dry up for a few days, and uh, while we're waiting for that to dry up, we can move on to finishing up the interior. I have some ideas I wanna do for this. Uh, maybe a two-tone leather interior or something like that, but. All right, I, so I think that'll do it for this video. I know it's been a long time since I posted. Seems like there's always something that gets in the way of uh, hobby time. But uh, anyway, get this video posted up for you guys, and hopefully you won't have to wait as long for the next installment. But uh, anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching, and uh, make sure you stay tuned for the next one. Thanks.